Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at 15 advanced uh, Linux interview questions uh, and also we will look at the answers for these questions. Now whether you are uh, getting up for a job interview or you just aiming to enhance your uh, Linux skills, then this video is just for you. Uh, once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's um, get into this. The first question we have is, what is the difference between a process and a thread? So your process, it is simply an independent program that is running in the Linux operating system and it has its own uh, memory space for the execution. All right. Um, a thread, on the other hand, is a smaller unit of your process. So it's basically your thread is inside or within a process and it shares the same uh, memory space. So process has its own memory so if you have multiple process like a java process it will have its own memory apache process it will have its own memory now within this process we will have threads which is sharing the same uh, process so your threads um, uh, within the same process can communicate more easily but the processes are more isolated from each other so when we talk about a java process uh, and an apache process they are isolated but when we talk about your threads which are within a process they can easily communicate with each other because they are within the same process the next question we have is how does the s trace command help in debugging so the s trace command it's mainly a diagnostic tool that is available for us in the linux operating system and we can use this to keep it uh, or trace all the system calls and the system signals so this tool it mainly helps in uh, uh, debugging and also showing which uh, system calls a program is making so if i'm executing a program what all system calls that program is doing we can uh, get all that information by making use of your s trace command so uh, what system calls it is making in what order it is making the calls and what are the return values all that information can be um, uh, we can we can debug all that information now this can help us in identifying where a program is failing or where it is misbehaving and we can also see the order in which it is doing the system calls that's where we can make use of your s trace command the next question we have is explain how C groups or control groups are used in Linux. So C groups also known as control groups that's your Linux kernel feature and we can use this to limit and also account for and isolate the usage of your resources. So when I say resources it can be your CPU, your memory or disk input output for a collection of processes so if you have a process running if you want to limit the resource utilization for that process we can make use of your uh, c groups for that so it is mainly used with your containerization uh, technologies like your docker and kubernetes and this provides mechanisms to control the resource allocation among various tasks so depending on the container that you are running it will automatically allocate the resources so we can make use of your c groups to control that as well as to how much resource needs to be allocated the next question we have is what is c linux and how does it enhance the security so c linux it stands for security enhanced linux and this is mainly a security module that is available uh, within the Linux kernel and it provides a mechanism for um, uh, supporting or providing the access control security policy. So if you want to implement security policies within your Linux kernel, we can make use of your C Linux for that. So it uses uh, MAC, which is your mandatory access controls. And by using this, we can enforce uh, security policies uh, to the Linux machine, uh, which also limits the scope of what processes can do. So if you want to have security policies for your processes, we can make use of your C Linux. And this enhances the overall security of your system. So whenever we're talking about security of your Linux machine, we can implement your C Linux for that. The next question we have is how do you manage kernel modules in Linux? So kernel modules can be managed by making use of commands that are available for this. So one of the command we have is your uh, mod probe or mod probe which can be used to add or remove the modules from the system. Then we have another command which is your ls mod which can be used to list 
all the currently loaded modules then we have another command which is our rm mod which can be used to remove the modules from the system so we can uh, work with the modules by making use of these commands now we can also make use of this configuration file which is available uh, in this path slash etc slash mod probe dot d we can use this also to manage our module so we can either run these commands or we can directly access this file to control the modules behavior the next question we have is explain the purpose of slash proc directory so the slash proc directory it is simply a sudo file system that is available within the linux machine and this provides a mechanism to access uh, processes and kernel information so if you want to access your uh, process related information and kernel related information we can make use of this slash proc which is a sudo file system or a sudo directory now this contains all the virtual files that represents the system information like your cpu information your memory information your configurations all that information will be available within the slash proc uh, directory which is a sudo uh, directory the next question we have is how can you optim optimize the performance of a linux system so uh, in order for us to optimize the overall performance of the linux operating system we have uh, uh, tuning kernel parameters that we can uh, make use of so we have this command called sys ctl we can use that so we can use it to manage resource usage by implementing c groups we can optimize io scheduling uh, we can also utilize uh, performance monitoring tools like the top tool io top h top and also we can have uh, profiling applications by making use of tools like perf or s trace so that way we can optimize the performance of the linux machine by utilizing the different tools that are available for us the next question we have is what is the difference between hard and soft real-time systems in linux so a hard real-time system guarantees or it makes sure that a critical task completes within the time constraint so it follows a strict time constraint and your hard real time will make sure that the task completes within that time constraint now the soft real time on the other hand uh, will prioritize your completing task as soon as possible but it does not guarantee your strict time so basically it tries to complete the task as soon as possible but the, it does not follow the strict timing whereas your hard real time follows the strict timing and it makes sure the task gets completed within that time the next question we have is how does the ip tables command work in linux so the ip tables it is simply a command line utility that is available within the linux machine and we can use this to configure your firewalls uh, within the linux machine like you know if you want to allow any port numbers from which uh, source you want to allow all that can be configured by making use of your ip tables and uh, this is implemented within the net filter project all right so as an admin we can use this ip tables to set up maintain and also inspect the uh, tables which are nothing but your rules the ip packet filter rules and uh, this will control the flow of your incoming and outgoing packet so uh, for easier understanding you can think of it as your security groups that we have in your ec2 so that's what we have your ip tables in your linux machines the next question we have is what are namespaces in linux and how are they used so namespaces that's another feature that is available within your linux kernel and this helps us to isolate and virtualize system resources such as your process ids your network interfaces and also your file systems and these are the fundamental uh, blocks of your containerization technology so one is your c groups which we have already discussed um, uh, in, in in the previous question and then we have your namespaces which is uh, again used in your containerization so when we talk about tools like docker and kubernetes you will see people very often talking about namespaces which is nothing but uh, isolating and virtualizing your system resources and by making use of these namespaces it makes sure that each container that we create has its own isolated environment 
so this namespaces and c groups these are actually your linux uh, features which are implemented in your containerization technology the next question we have is explain the concept of load average in linux so the load average uh, represents the average um, number of processes that are running on your linux machine and these processes it in, it it basically indicates the runnable or uninterruptible state of the processor so the average number of processes which are in the running state or in the uninterruptible state the load average basically defines that so it is usually displayed as three numbers corresponding to the last 1 5 and 15 minutes and a high load average basically indicates that the system is under heavy load so the load average is to simply uh, you know indicate what is the load on the machine and generally if if you see a high load average that means the system is under a lot of pressure the next question we have is how does the nice command affect process scheduling now the nice command can be used to control the scheduling priority of your process so if you want to um, prioritize a process you can make use of your nice command now by default whenever we start a process it starts with a priority of zero by default but if you want to control that we can make use of your nice command to set a lower pro priority or also a higher priority now whenever we set a lower priority it will always have a higher nice value like 10 20 15 uh, 25 and whenever if you see a higher nice value it has the lower priority and this will make sure that the process will receive less cpu time so lower the priority lower the cpu uh, time uh, that the process can get compared to other higher priorities so if you see a higher priority then that process will have a lower uh, nice value so basically you can use this to control the cpu time allocation to your process so the lower the uh, nice value higher the priority higher the value lower the priority the next question we have is what is the role of the system d in it system in linux so the system d it is simply a init system of your linux operating system and also a system manager for your linux operating system so we can use this to basically manage the startup um, of your services like you know starting the services uh, managing the services we can do that by making use of your system d command we can also use it to handle any initialization of your tasks uh, managing the dependencies and also logging and service monitoring all these can be done by making use of your system d command the next question we have is how do you create a swap file in linux so for us to create a swap file uh, there are a series of commands that we'll need to run so the first thing we'll have to do is we'll need to create an empty file by running this command assuming we are creating a swap file of size 1 gb all right then we will need to define the necessary permissions by making use of the chmod command so here we are running the chmod 600 and then the name of the swap file that we have created in the first step then we will need to set up the swap space by running this mk swap and then the name of the swap uh, file so that's basically making the swap post that we will need to enable the swap file with the swap on command so once we are done creating this swap file we will need to enable it's like we are activating the swap file and then finally we will add the swap file to the slash etc slash fs tab file now why do we do that so if you don't do this if you reboot the system the swap file will be gone you won't be able to use it but if you want to make it persistent across reboots we can add that swap file to uh, this this file so basically the path so slash etc slash fs tab that's where we can add it that way even if i reboot the system the swap file would still be available for me the next question we have is what are the differences between ext4 and xfs file systems so ext4 is one of your very widely used file system that we have in your linux machine and this is mainly known for its simplicity and 
robustness all right so ext4 can be used to support large files and volumes we can use it for journaling and also defragmentation of your data now xfs on the other hand is designed for high performance scalability and handling very large files very efficiently all right uh, xfs also supports online resizing but it does not support shrinking and has very advanced features for parallel input output all right uh, but i would say you know ext4 is what very widely used when compared to your xfs and that brings us to the end of our 15 advanced linux interview questions along with their answers i hope you found this video helpful and that it boosts your confidence for your next interview if you have any questions or any topics that you would like me to cover in future videos uh, let me know in the comments section don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel for more valuable content thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video